Hi, my name is Benedict for Higher Hertz. In this video, we're looking at Acrismatic Audio's Daedalus. Uh, Daedalus being the father of the ill-fated Icarus. Uh, so we have to hope that this is not going to be as ill-fated as Icarus, and not Icarus the VST, Icarus the uh, the flying until he's not flying fellow. Uh, Daedalus flew as well. He just thankfully was smart enough not to go too high and to uh, lose his wings. Hopefully this continues in this situation. What it is. Okay. A powerful tool for manipulating audio in real time, utilizing a network of delay lines that are granulated and modulated to create a labyrinth of echoes. Hmm, Benedict likes echoes. Then further processed by filters, dynamic processes, and saturation modules to produce a wide variety of effects, from reverb-like ambiences to revolving resonations, rhythmic pulsation to chaotic layering, subtle chorusing to pure noise distortion. Endless possibilities for shaping your world. I think I'm in love. So the thing is, does this follow through? That is a lot of purple pros. Uh, and does the device follow through? Let's take our time with this. We'll pop this aside for the moment. Here is our donor piece. Very impressive work. Let's give it a little bit of send reverb, make it a little bit more livable. Hertz multipliers doing duties there. Now let's separate these sounds. Hello. The more astute amongst you might notice that the melody's even changed, but it warps in a weird kind of a way. What this doohickey has is an ability to follow MIDI. If we turn that off, you're hearing the original melody? Turn it back on. You've got a sense of the original melody in the timbre, but it's overridden by the melody being imparted here. A little like vocoding, but not. Interesting. Let's give that a little bit more character with an echo. Because most digital sounds do sound a lot better once you've got some uh, modulated delay on them. And let's add this fella. Hmm. I actually used a grain device here to see what would happen if we put grains through grains. Childish, perhaps. I didn't want this to be dominating. Just this obviously needed a centre before we were anywhere with it. So we're adding movement some chorusy type feeling, some width, and just a sense of it belonging somewhere in the world. And then drums. This is going to suit what most people are looking for. Well, hello. This one is a preset. I don't recall changing anything on this. So yes, there are presets in here. That's kind of interesting. I remember in the early 80s, that sort of stuff took quite some time and energy to do. Now you can just dial up a preset. So we started here, which is anemic, to put it kindly. And we've added a lot of movement, a lot of texture, a lot of interest. Is it a good piece? Oh, hell no. But the change, the AB is what we're looking for. So it definitely can deliver some very, very interesting sorts of sounds. Who are these people, Acosmatic? They are new developers, apparently been around doing this, that, and the other, but these days everybody overinflates what they've done uh, and got background in sound design, this, that, and the other. But either way, they got together and decided to make this. They distribute through a small up-and-coming 
collective type thing. So yes, another one of these websites that wants to sell devices from several different manufacturers. This people call themselves Isotonic Studios. And they've got a few things. They seem to have started out more with uh, devices that uh, run under, I think it's Max for Live, basically work in um, Ableton Live. So if you're a live user, you may be familiar with one or both of these names, but entirely possible that you may not, because honestly, they do seem pretty left field. And also, I'll be very blunt and say they do feel a little beginner. And that can be a strength and a weakness, as I believe we will see in, in both directions here, but not enough of a weakness to, to undo the strength if the strength suits what you're looking for and prepared to do. Uh, so basically the same blurb. Uh, I did find their website a little bit 1995, uh, and I had to go in in circles a couple of times to actually work out how to get the demo that they offer. We're running on demo. There don't seem to be any interrupts in the demo, which is very nice. I think it runs completely, you know, free of troubles and pain in the ass-ishness uh, for 15 days, something or other, for a period of time. So it is nice. It doesn't intrude on itself, which is, is great. It also doesn't seem to be giving me annoyances with iLock or anything like that. Uh, so that bit's okay, but installation was not ideal. Uh, and I did actually experience a crash once, which I didn't know what caused it, haven't been able to duplicate it. It may have been more of a reason thing, but I did hit a problem. So as I say, I think in some ways it's relatively early days for them. But the strength on that is that they seem to be, rather than trying to create me too where they seem to be trying to go outside of the box and and i'm a big fan of people who go outside of the box because the last thing we need is another something damned uh 1176 clone that's saying that it's more 1176 than ever and better because they've modernized it or whatever it's like we we don't need that kind of bs no matter how big your name is we'll run through the good and bad and then we will dig into this dastardly duck so what's good? Radical, wacky transformations is probably the best way to say what this does in its truest sense. Yes, you can get it to do more sedate things, but it's a lot of extra trouble to try to make it do the obvious things. Uh, getting it to do the wacky is probably where it's really aimed at, and I'm generally not big on wacky, radical sorts of things, but this is different enough to justify it itself against other similar sorts of things. I thought we were, I was actually going to be reviewing a, um, a larger name, more hip and happening kind of a, a thing, you know, one of those boxes that got 10 effects and modulations and what have you all over the place. And while it was kind of cool, it was very predictable, um, not necessarily in how it worked, but very predictable in its results, in its sounds. It was a, let's sound exactly like this kind of a box. Whereas this is not quite so predictable and more able to give you something that's outside of the safe and approved cliche. That will put some people off, okay? But it is a real strength if you know how to harness it. So in terms of things like public enemy loops or um, or weirdly beautified pads, yes, we have a lot of potential in this. And as I've already pointed out, it's just not the same thing. That is a real plus in my mind. For some people's minds, they'll go, oh, but I'm only after the thing that gives me exactly the same sound. And it's like, well, good luck with that, because by the time you have perfected that sound, it's no longer that sound. So it's like chasing the losing horse and, and then betting on it, you know, just as it's about to lose. You lose. Uh, in terms of things that are not so good, yes, the install uh, raised a warning as it being potentially malware. Um, I don't think it's potential malware. I think it's just not signed or whatever it is. I think these developers really, if they want to play in the bigs, uh, need to um, uh, sort of take a little bit more stock on their infrastructure uh, and understand that you want your installs and everything to be an easy process. It then went and installed things that I didn't want. I don't use Pro Tools, so why install Pro Tools versions of your plugins on my computer? I don't want them. 
You might go, Bob, what does it matter? Well, they're Miss. I don't want Miss on my drive. Normally, a plugin comes with the ability to pick and choose which of the 57 versions I want on my drive. What's wrong with that option? Or, if you're going to play grassroots, and I'm all for that, then get rid of the installer entirely. Give me a folder and say, put this folder in um, uh, Common Files VST3, and you're good to go. That should be probably all you need, unless you've got other things you're installing. I didn't get the impression. But nonetheless, the install was not elegant. It is not intuitive. I looked at these things with all my decades of um, dubious love for uh, delay, and I had to RTFM several times to even begin to make sense of it. And that was after having watched their little primer video. Uh, it is not intuitive. Uh, it is doing some things a little bit different, but not that different. And yet it's taken a very different path there. That, as I've said, can be a strength because it means that fewer people are going to paddle in this pool because they're going to go eh, and hop out. Um, but it also is a bit of a nightmare because chances are you're just going to go WTF and walk away. So if you are one of those people who's like, I really want to be outside the box, you're going to have to sort of put the ego on hold for a week or two to start to get your head around this thing. Uh, so definitely RTFM. Unfortunately, the um, FM is not particularly great. They are, I don't know, Italian something or other. People, English doesn't appear to be their first language, and uh, the manual reflects that. So guys, if you are watching this, please get somebody who's a native English speaker to actually rewrite your manual so that it makes sense. Uh, so much of it makes sense to you, but it doesn't make sense to anybody on the outside. And this is from somebody with 30 years of, as I say, unreasonable attraction to delay lines. Um, it is a weakness for you where you're fielding an odd product to have a poor manual. Uh, and then, as I say, it crashed. And that was at the beginning. My beginnings of this were not good. Um, and I almost threw my hands up. But there was something about it that made me think, maybe I'll hang on. And then I started to get results. And that's where the good comes in, which is radical, wacky transformations, which are capable of being really out there, uh, beyond the usual kind of like, oh, let's sound like Skrillex or whatever it is everybody's supposed to be trying to sound like. I'm sure it's not him because he hasn't been fashionable for a while. But really nice kind of public enemy style looping and these beautiful pads or really kind of at their uncomfortable sorts of things so that it's able to deliver this, wow, that's not the usual sort of stuff. There's our good and bads. Let's pop this aside. We'll actually get rid of these. And we have one here, which we will look through. It doesn't have a bypass button. This is a thing that does kind of annoy me, but then I don't always put bypass button thing on things either. But something as big as this, it would be nice to have a bypass button somewhere uh, because then you have to go out to your door to manage that. And I know some things like Reaper um, and probably Live have little buttons on their thing. But if you want people outside of your, your single door to be using it, you might consider other options as well. Nonetheless, not a killer, just a little annoyance. So we've got this really complex, oh my god, what do I do with it? It looks like it should make sense and then it just doesn't make sense at all. There are presets. They are interesting. Um, but because they're so interesting, they don't necessarily marry up to what you're trying to achieve. But they are there and they cover a fair amount of ground, but they do mostly cover the weird and wacky kind of stuff which I guess they figure to be their target market. Like a lot of, um, of devices these days, it's all modern, 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 modern. They're sort of one-eyed. Uh, I was just reading something from a, a, an online friend who was playing with a, a certain large name. Um, here will automatically mix your thing for you. And um, while he pointed out that, oh, yes, it gave me that sound straight away with no, no real effort, the problem was that it gave him that sound, and that is not the sound of his style, his art, and that it was never realistically going to give him the sound of his art. It was just going to perfect somebody else's 
formula sound underneath him. So the presets can be a little like that, but they are interesting as learning points if you go, okay, what's this doing? Therefore, how's this doing it? There is an initialize, okay, it's here, yes. Okay, with another interrupt. Yes, boys, this isn't Windows 3.1 anymore. You've got this sort of nice, if not a little overly complex, like what on earth is this for, uh, GUI, but then you interrupt it with these ugly Windows 3.1 kinds of things. So this is its default. This bothered me right from the get-go. It's like, what is wrong with this? You hear that the first taps appear to be the same level and the, the fade doesn't seem quite right. So it's almost sounds like by about the third tap it's gotten louder. I don't know. Even if you turn down your input gain, I know that's a 50%, but there's just something a little uncomfortable about that. Double click will reset things. Control clip will allow you to put it into a fine mode which case it becomes very move one thing at a time. Your mouth loses all sensitivity. But that is necessary because there's no way to type things in. So again, some conventions while there are odd because normally you shift click to slow the mouse down. But shift click is used for something different here. There are conventions here, whether you like them or not, there are conventions. So, why change them unnecessarily? Uh, again, it speaks to a, a, a strange sort of techie mindset, which I found very, very off-putting right from the beginning because I love delay, but I love delay as a, as a tool for creating musical, artistic textures. And then this hits me as being a... So this is where I was like, oh my God, what do I do? So what do we do? What have we got? We've got these delay controls, which kind of look like conventional delay controls. They are, of course, locked to BPM. We all know what Benedict thinks about that. So I turn it off. Okay, we've got delay one and delay two. Okay, fair enough. And then they jump to two seconds. Why? That just is not a logical thing to jump to. Either jump to what the sync value was, or, because I know that's doable, because Reason always used to do it with their first delay plugin, or set it to something that's a little bit more realistic. But then we've got a problem of like, they don't behave normally at all. And fair enough, that's their thing. This is their stock in trade. What happens is that this delay too is actually not the other delay. It's a variation knob. But the problem is everything's dependent on everything else in a non-intuitive way. So it took me a long time, which I must say I'm still struggling with. So that's a simple delay. But blow me down if that just doesn't feel right. In terms of, I come into this and straight away I sort of want to go, well, I want to find the delay that I'm used to. Now, maybe that's a weakness because this is designed to be different, but as I said, it's not strong on the basics. But to me, I start with the basics. So to get a single delay line, we set the tempo here. And I must say those tempos, I'm not convinced are right, but nonetheless, that's what they say they are. Or maybe these have to be exactly the same. Actually, yes, they do. Okay, now I finally start to get this. I got it the other way around, but this, this is unintuitive. So 145 here, 145 here, and I know that they say this is not really how we do it, but this is how I want to start. Okay, now they sort of sound like the same. Because you can't type in a value, there's not really an easy way to make this copy and paste or whatever. It's kind of like, okay. But if we have these at exactly the same number, then we get a conventional delay, despite the fact that 
the echo mm -hmm. sounds a little different, but it's, it's more even than it was before. If there's any kind of offset between this value and this value, then it looks to create some kind of move between those two values. It says that it's got these two values and is crossfading between them. I don't think it's as simple as that because it's granulating. In other words, constant little sampling, grabbing little slices of time based upon the hertz value here. And then moving between them. So it's hard to get that classic delay, because as you can hear, it's sort of moving around a bit. But we can put this upper and lower values, and it's going to move around between them. And it's not really a straight crossfade, as though we had a digital delay line and a digital delay line and a crossfader between them. It's more complex because of this grain stuff. In sync, it's BPM. Obviously, we can go to triplets and dots and what have you. And then we've got very delay. So it's a little easier to understand here. We can say, oh, well, I want my timing to vary by this much. And I can set my variation to be somewhere between a sine wave or a random wave. So you can hear that that's not coming back perfectly in time. It's coming back a little jutted all over the place with minimum or no pitch wobbliness. Normally to do this, we have a pitch wobbliness. That's more like a conventional delay line. And maybe this literally is a conventional delay line. That's using what they call glide. Again, a kind of a made up term. Um, I would rather see turning on the, uh, the grain mode, but clearly they've got in mind a certain thing. We can have, so both delays move up and down at the same time, or so one goes up, the other goes down. So stereo, oddly enough. And then when we're in grain mode, there's the speed with which the grains are being taken. Which starts to give you strange and interesting results. And then you can control the time of your delay by pitch. So this is similar to physical modeling or resonance modeling. So we're using an incredibly short delay time, which is matching the notes that we're playing. And we can respond to MIDI as we saw with the other one. I'm not going to do that here. You heard it before uh, and it's one to play with. So what that means is that this now changes the delay time to match the pitching of the note that we put in. So as you heard before, we could take an existing melody and drag it out somewhere else by feeding it this different line, similar to a vocoder or to some extent um, a misuse of auto-tune type thing where you feed it MIDI and force the notes to do I believe kind of thing. Interesting, it's being done with this, so you're using a very short timing to create resonance. And of course you can control it here. Obviously we would normally want a lot more feedback to create a tone and at this point a lot of this stuff seems to vary a little bit and then we've got the ability to vary that by a certain amount so in other words pulling it in and out of tuning that is potentially a quite interesting one how well that's going to play out in reality I'm not sure so I'm not going to say this is the killer feature it might be I'm not going to say it's not but it may be one that you find you get used for every now and then, 
but a great extent of the time find you have no use for at all. Um, but it is interesting and it's very cool to see something like this implemented, even if maybe it's not implemented in a particularly intuitive way. A way that makes sense to the developer, but is it going to make sense to the average punter who's picking up a VST? I have some concerns on that. So there are your three modes, which is the sense of having a target and then a variation amount. And with the free mode, it's actually possible for your target to be high and your variation to be low, meaning that between 400 and 2.5 is your variation, or between 5 and 102 is your variation, the gap between those two being the variation. Then, so long as you're not in this mode, which is a little like your, um, your normal delay mode, I think it's a normal delay, it seems to indicate that, but it's very unclear about what's what, don't be secret or proprietary, boys. Uh, then you're in the grain mode, so it then comes down to how fast the grains are working. I'll be very honest and say I've never been in love with grain. I think that grain is one of those things that in theory offers the world but delivers very little. Uh, occasionally I get value from it and do things and just put out an album where a couple of the tracks are actually a couple of existing tracks that have been put through grain and flubbed up. But I see it as a minor trick. Um, I can't work out myself how to make grain do these supposedly amazing things that it will do. I mostly see it doing wacky, uncontrolled, um, I don't know how to be creative musically, so I'll make wacky noises kind of thing. People will have other opinions on that. I would love to see actual factual things of saying, here's how somebody's done something truly amazing, not just made a weird noise. Because anyone can make a weird noise with anything. Sample a weird noise, do some weird stuff to it, you've got an even weirder noise. <laughs> a skinny puppy will weigh ahead of you. Um, so nonetheless, we've got this grain thing here, and that can influence the feel of the results that you get. But I feel like maybe it'd be nice if we had more control over the grain, but maybe there's really no win to be had. The scrub merely is, this is the modulation that's happening, and rate and amount somehow seem to be almost tied together, and they behave differently whether we're talking grain or straight delay. They behave in a predictably ish way with that, but grain's always a little less predictable, which is, I guess, a lot of what people find amusing about it. Uh, so these are very tied together. We've obviously got feedback. This is designed to go into huge amounts of self-oscillation. You can then put it into a feedback damping mode. So once the signal that's coming in, like what I'm playing here, is turned off, we can actually have it start to get rid of the oscillation. And then gates and what have you as well. I'm not going to get heavily into that. It's There's a lot I can't get heavily into in this because we'll be here forever. And I can't fully understand it myself, despite having put quite a lot of hours into it. Input gain, as I said, this sort of seems kind of strange, but it does impact on how other parts behave. So if it seems to be running too hot or you're just not comfortable, as I'm not particularly comfortable with its initial mix, pull down your input gain. It does help a little. Uh, output gain, that just controls the whole thing. This can get a little loud. I don't think I encountered any situation where it got quiet, but I've encountered plenty of situation where it got loud. In the, the little piece that I had before, you notice everything was pulled back three or six dB. It can get loud, so be it. Uh, you can also have it that it cross modulates. So it takes on what's one and feeds it back to the other. Now, honestly, sometimes that just doesn't really add any great value. But sometimes it does. Uh, it's there. Then the random pan. So we can take... At what point it's randomised, I'm not sure. 
Maybe it's each grain uh, can be panned randomly. We've got no real control over that. I again wonder why we wouldn't just have a, a nobula so that we can go from none of that, sir, to bring it on, uh, rather than uh, yet none of that or bring it on or bugger you. Uh, maybe they found again that there was no real value in it, but I know that within Reason's Grain, uh, there is a randomized pan for one of the grain modes, and you virtually never want it on 100%. A little bit's good. So what that is, I don't know, but it just feels a little bit like, ooh, seeing, you, seeing we're going outside the wire, why can't we have access to more things? Um, especially where there's this bit of real estate that... What do I want that for? You can say all about how it's a, a guyometer or whatever it is, but it doesn't make me feel any more guy-like at all having it there. I don't need it. We've got... Or metering. I think they said this metering was supposed to show input and output and what have you. I think that's supposed to be metering, but I never saw it work. Whether it's a bug or not, I don't know, but it just seems like a waste, which is a shame because there's a lot of potential. Coming up here, and we've got filtering. Now we've got high pass and low pass. And they've got two modes, but you can move between the pair of these. Which means that this is inside the feedback loop. So every time it goes around, it hacks more off. Cool. Or this is post. Or maybe I'm the wrong way around. It's, it's an RTFM again. Um, it's unclear which side's which. I'm not sure. Uh, okay, so... Let's just use one of these. I think this is post. So the filter is post everything. So we get to the end of all of our stuff that's happening with our echoes. We put it through a filter. We just say, okay, that's the filter we're giving you. Or every time it goes around, it gets filtered more. Yeah, so it is what I thought it was first time around. And then you can mix and match. 50% means that the first echo has got some filtering and then more filtering after each. This, this way means that the first echo has no filtering, but the ones after do. So 50-50 is probably what you're mostly after. But you will find that you get different results with the tail with different things here. So it's one of those ones to sort of play with. Why the high pass goes so high, I really don't understand. Maybe there's some advantage in having the ability to filter at 14K. Um, I think that I would like this to be a lot less aggressive because what happens is you don't feel like you have a lot of throw down here where it matters, so you tend to go too high and then go, well, that sucks and kind of pull it out. Um, so I, I don't see why we would need to go above one, two, three, maybe even four, which could, even if we went sort of halfway to five, five and a half, that would double the amount of sensitivity on our throw here. If there really is value to be up here, you've got plenty of space, you could give us a little button that just says times two and gives us this starting at five, going up to 20. Maybe there's a reason for it, but I didn't, I didn't feel like I really felt why we would do it. So again, it feels like a technical exercise more than a, here, let's build a beautiful instrument. But it doesn't stop beauty from being able to be made here once you get the feel for it. That's just the difficult bit, getting the feel for it. We then got drive. Notice how when you hover over something, it, it, we lose the, the actual name of it. You could have put a number underneath here, although I understand that would have been problematic. So, and then this seems to be responding to X, Y's or something or other, but it just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't necessarily feel like that was the nicest solution. Drive gets pretty raucous pretty fast. Again, I feel like it would be nice to have a more subtle mode. This, an overdrive limiter, they don't really explain where it sits in the process, but it does stop some of the extreme overdoedness of it but I feel like it just goes to um, 
it goes straight past Metallica and straight past Megadeth into Napalm Death um, right at the beginning of its throw. So sort of what's the point of this? I think scaling either is wrong or we may not need that or we could simply use another little button that says, oh, you were after Napalm Death. Sorry, my mistake. I thought you were after Metallica. Here, let me give you Napalm Death with the press of this button. Um, just, I think, makes this too hard to really use in a subtle fashion. Colour. This one, oh, now what was it again? It's, it's changing the, the colour based on things Oh, look, let me RTFM the manual in front of you. I do not like doing this, but overdrive and bandwidth. Um, the overdrive, the colour sets the distortion bandwidth. Okay. Median values ex affect the whole spectrum. Low values, the lower frequencies. Saturation, high values, the higher frequencies. Excitation. Okay. This is kind of cool, but really, again, very, very unintuitive. Uh, and took a couple of read-arounds to go, what are we doing here? So this is choosing where in the bandwidth the drive is occurring. So if it's occurring lower, then yes, we get what they're calling saturation, meaning that we're focusing on the, 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 the downloads so that you get the little coming from there. Or if we're focusing on the up highs, hear how it gets things brighter. Otherwise, across the whole broad spectrum, we're just brutalizing. Um, so there's a selective napalm deathing. I think that's called genocide. Uh, okay, that that is interesting, and that's fair enough. But again, it just feels unintuitive in how it's put together. And I am sorry. I actually I'm going to raise something. Somebody had a go at me on one of the recent videos for saying all I was was negative. It's like, well, dude, you clearly didn't watch the video. You didn't see that I liked certain things and didn't like certain other things. This is frustration, not negativity. If I thought this was unmitigated, well, you don't want this, then I would have probably refused to review it. I think there are some really cool things about this. Remember, I do a good and bad, and I do it fairly early. I've said there are some really good things in here, but there are some serious difficulties as well. And when you've got your user being frustrated, not knowing what something is easily enough, then that's fair. That is my job. My job is to provide a review based on my experience. And my experience is that out of 30 years of doing this stuff, this is frustrating. But not frustrating necessarily because I've hit a whole new technology. Frustrating simply because I've met somebody who seems to think that they, if they reinvent everything and give everything a different name, that it'll somehow be better. No, keep me comfortable with what I do know so that I can then focus only on what's wacky and new. Uh, don't make what's existing and conventional different. Anyway, there is overdrive there, sometimes obviously useful, but I find it far too aggressive, far too Splatsville uh, for a lot of the time. And then this bandwidth one, which again is a weird one, Maybe because they're breaking into um, um, FIR or something or other, I don't know. But this is basically like a low-pass filter, but the way they describe it, it doesn't sound like a low-pass filter. It almost sounds like maybe they've got some kind of band-limiting thing that says, okay, above this, we just won't process. Um, it feels digital. Maybe that's just because grain always sounds very digital. But if that's a low-pass filter, why not just call it a low-pass filter? Calling it bandwidth suggests to me that it's actually something else. Don't know. But it's a, if you're finding that the whole thing's a little too bright, because it is prone to being pretty bright and digitally, then band limit. Because it may well literally be band limiting and that it's giving you the ability to not only band limit at, say, 20k, but down at 
you know, 1K or whatever. I mean, obviously it can go to the, the nowhere territory. It's just one of these weird, unexplained sorts of things. All right, so we've covered all of those in a reasonable kind of a way. And then we've got this. Okay, a kind of an MZIG. And when it's running, ooh, cool display. For what, I'm not sure. It shows us what is running and what is not running. Okay, that's kind of cool. And then we've got the ability to obviously move things around. All manner of M segginess. Okay, I really had to RTFM to how to use this thing. And it wasn't until I looked in some of the patches and went, oh, I didn't see that before. There's no matrix here, none at all, and no assignment thing. But if we take our thing and drag it off onto a control, oh, look, it now tells me this is being modded by mod one and showing me the movement. And I can control how much it's modding things by. If I hit shift to, oh, that was the wrong key. Normally you hit shift, remember, to make this thing move in finer amounts. But no, not with this, you have to hit control because if you hit shift, it'll delete your modulation. So now this gives me a bit finer control over this. Interesting. Clearly a echo. A lot more movement. So this is where it starts to get interesting. And you can then use your modulators to modulate other things. How you use the modulators to modulate themselves, I'm a little less sure. Ah, okay, so you've got to be on the modulator that you want to move to, and then, and we better turn this on. Forgive me, I didn't actually do that before. It seems that modulation's only um, unipolar. Um, as in it goes above, there doesn't seem to be a way to necessarily make it go bipolar, as in above and below, but mm, it's not terrible. That's your main functionality there. So you can drag this off, let's say modulation two, let's say we want to go to Oh, let's go to here, see what happens. All right, fair enough. What happens, I didn't try this, if we want to send... No, you can't. So you can only send one modulator to a target by the looks of it. Yeah. So let's, let's assign two. Strange sort of reverb. I'll admit I really struggled to get a nice reverb out of this, um, and by nice I'm not fussy, you know that I really like interesting character reverbs, but it tended to the digital uh, and the harsh. But to use this as a feeder for another reverb that's more algorithmic, um, or, you know, more traditional delay, maybe. That gets a little bit as your father. <laughs> Okay, that's softer if we double that. What if we... That seems to sort of take over whatever um, panning was there.
if we put a um, let's put this guy on and let's put it into a So that smooths it out and takes something that's a bit much on its own, a bit uncomfortable. And makes it a lot more comfortable. So it's, it's not uncommon for these sort of digital processes to want a more warm analogy kind of feel after them to make them comfortable again. Uh, but this is interesting. We've then got a second mode. Let's just kill off these for the moment before we start to get something that's so incomprehensible. Let's turn him off. So we're looking at the one thing. It's possible to move into a kind of random mode. And that one's... sort of interesting, but I don't... Actually, it is adding depth. Actually, that's really softened this off, big time. Let's pop them out of the way for the moment. So putting this on, has actually moved things around even more than they were before. So that's, that's actually quite a nice thing. I did see that this was used quite a lot in feedback. Let's just pull it off here. So let's say we did put this back on here. maybe move the relationship a little bit. We've now got a more random sort of a room. And that becomes interesting. Uh, so there's, there's a fair amount that we can do with that. The, the kooky graphics may be a little... Hmm, we can move it to linear, we can move it to curves. So this is like a soft noise moving between position here and there. That's a sample and hold kind of thing. That's a softened sample and hold. And that's a very soft sample and hold. So if you're after random, this is an interesting device. If this were in reason, either as a standalone output as CV or in something like, let's say Europa added one of these, uh, may not use it every time, but I would find uses for this. This is really cool. Uh, and would like to see this sort of thing applied more broadly. So if you are interested in Reason, I know the rack extensions are a little hard to sell, but if you're interested in, to the developers, if you're interested in Reason, this is the kind of thing that would do super well in Reason and most likely do pretty darned well in Bitwig if there isn't already something mining this seam. Your next thing is to have these modes, blocks, which is similar to random, but it's a step sequencer. And you can cycle through. 
let's just get rid of that. Uh, let's try cycling through our grain frequency, see if that's going to make any difference. Yeah, we can hear that. have to read what the difference between cycle and step is and yes of course you can put them in sync mode scramble okay that just seems to scramble all the values that I've gotten rearrange them random just creates a whole new random set of values fair enough and then you can move things around and up and down and all those sorts of things and reset it that really is quite interesting if we took this and whacked it out here we are getting textures that would not come so easily out of a reverb unit because they're what most people would not want their reverb unit to do therefore they become nice feeders for something else, like here. If we were to take our reverb unit and say, okay, I'm just going to use this as a send and then attach something else to it to smooth it out, then... We've got a unique space. Obviously not the cliched formula sound exactly like whoever's fashionable last month kind of thing, but it is interesting. So this is this is pretty cool. Uh, its control is generally fairly good. Like we could take our well, let's let's make one of these and get it in motion and uh, let's change its tempo. Drag it off to let's drag it off to overdrive. Make sure there's. That's interesting. It really is different. Obviously, there's nothing to stop us from feeding this a more conventional kind of um, sound. I know most of you only want to hear it do wacka wacka kinds of things. Uh, let's go to players, uh, do your arpeggio. Obviously different. Actually, something I saw that was kind of cool was um, I have to remember how, you, how this was done. Uh, double click, and yeah, they were, they were creating uh, a bouncing ball. Let's kill these ones off to get them out of the game. Done. It sometimes can be pretty complex to get. There we go. Oh, okay. I'm not on the one that I thought I was on. Okay, so none of them are actually doing anything at the moment. Let's just assign that there. Here, yeah, how we're altering our rhythm. Let's put 
is in sync. So you can hear that moving around rather than being perfectly tidy. It's now moving around. in to see what happens with this one. We've got a sense of modulation now because it's not actually possible to use traditional delay modulation and the grain modes at the same time. They don't seem to go together. It seems an either or. We can do that or this. Now, where was my... I thought I made a cool bouncing ball. Here it is, number four. Let's say number four. Uh, so let's go with the try wet, see what happens here. that's given us a really interesting if we offset that so. now we've got a counter rhythm so we've got a polyrhythm happening here which is all kinds of hitchy because it's not exactly what we expect and this is where this one gets really interesting and I think just a little bit outside of what everybody else is doing. But it is harder con to control in the process. You get them roughly the same as each other. So the sort of bouncing ball thing is kind of interesting. This is probably going to get all kinds of interesting. Okay, that's not going to work because I think we would need to apply this to both of these. And see what I mean is it doesn't work like a normal delay, which is disconcerting when you sort of go, oh, well, I just want to do a relatively normal thing with a, with a sideways quirk to it. No. Oh. That's why it's had the thing down. Okay, let's turn that off. That's just too interesting. That's interesting. It is more complex and it is easier to get caught because a lot of things are far more cross-dependent on each other. I know that's a bit of an obvious one. It's like, oh, dude, your um, dry wet's down, but you do find that there is more variability. It's just too much more. Sign that one again. Mm -hmm. 
Let's turn that up. Try to see if we could get that to be like a bouncing ball. Because I know in Bitwig they have a bouncing ball delay, which is super, super cool. But I can't work out how to get it to do that. Okay, that seems to actually be doing it. Odd. She knows not it was this that was doing it. There's no particular way to control some things as much as you'd want to. If I controlled this, and I may be just missing the logic um, to say, okay, it's still driven by this. But I just, if I want to just directly drive it and say... There may well be ways to do it, but this is interesting. This is really interesting and you're going to get different results out of it. Exactly what you're going to get is, is a little less clear uh, and that's really going to be off-putting for a lot of a lot of people, especially those who are saying all effects should give me whatever is fashionable right now. It should give me Skrillex using an 1176 that was modified by so-and-so to sound modern. It's, this kind of just doesn't play that way, which is a real strength if you are prepared to put in the time and find something really unique and to work out how it thinks, because it is a bit. Uh, that's going to be a really cool thing. Um, I will admit I'm on the fence personally about it, uh, as to whether I would just find it too infuriating when I'm in the middle of trying to do something and going, this is the feel that I want. Am I going to find it here? It feels too more like too much like I'd be opening a, a can of worms that could be full of anything but worms, um, and I don't necessarily see the wisdom in that uh, because if I know the, roughly the sort of sand I'm after, but given time, if I learn how to actually fly this thing, then I could be opening a can of worms that's full of worms, which I know how to deal with. In which case, that argument goes away, but. It's hard to get on top of, but it's definitely interesting the results that can come out of it. Um, hopefully you can get past the what on earth is this doing because I think this makes this so much harder with that manual that really... I think it's made by people who live outside of the way that most other people think and don't even necessarily realise that. And that can be great to be outside of the way most people think. I am one of those guys, but I also try to understand how other people think as well to translate. You know, being a science translator, you know, Carl Sagan, uh, somebody who translates science from, what the hell's that, rocket science, to people who can go, ooh, Mars is, you know, like, red because of Martians. Um, I I don't think that was actually what he said, uh, then, then that's a good thing. I just think that they need a bridge. I hope you have found this interesting. I think it is a potentially fascinating device with some flaws. And uh, if you are the right kind of person to take those flaws and turn them into strengths, this really could be, and I don't like the term, but I really think that this could be a secret weapon. Uh, for the right kind of person who finds the right kind of thing the, to make this do the special something that they're looking for. Otherwise, it could be just plain annoying and maybe best that you just go buy the same device that everybody else is using so that you can use the same preset to get exactly the same result. Is that a good plan? Probably not. 
Uh, but so long as you understand that you're only trying to clone somebody, not trying to find success in your own right, well, that's probably giving you what you want, in which case maybe it is a good plan. If you have any questions about the material, please be sure you have watched the video first. Um, not too keen on comments where you clearly haven't watched the video, but feel the overwhelming need to comment. Um, I don't do that to you. Uh, if you have questions about the content, please, again, remember um, Aquismatic Audio questions need to go to them because I'm not their support. They don't pay me for that. They don't pay me for doing the review either. Maybe they're glad they didn't after the review. But I think there's a really interesting thing here. They've got some people who are doing interesting work. Let's just find a way to make it translate a little bit better. And then I think you could build a couple of really fascinating devices which are doing things a little outside of the box in a way that people comprehend. Okay, Benedict again for Higher Hertz. Don't forget this higherhertz.com, different uh, stream of information there. And of course, uh, as you saw in here before, there was uh, the Hertz delay up there, adding echo duties and Hertz multiplier as well, which are freebies on the site. Make sure you have a great day.